Today's topic, obviously, digital distribution. It means many things to many people. How do all of us, producers, distributors, broadcasters, uh, handle the rapidly changing landscape? In a nutshell, it's essentially totally embracing new technology and trying to stay ahead of the curve, or in fact, trying to create the curve. And often that means spreading your bets across a number of different platforms, and we've all seen certain social media sites grow very, very quickly and then disappear again. So I think being very open, being very um, multi-platform needs to be at the heart of everything we do. The, the lifeblood of uh, all of us in this room, I presume, is, is content. And therefore, we believe that our talent, our script writers, our industry needs to, to continue and needs to grow. And to that end, we have to have a good blend of business models that work for us. We happen to be in uh, a pay environment. Um, that said, clips, viral content, social media as a platform for getting, getting content out to the, to the globe is extremely important. And you have moved recently into games and um, multiplayer games. Viacom International is essentially a media owner and publisher, so I won't see us as a broadcaster, although we have um, television channels in every country. What we expect to be able to do is build iconic brands and then get them uh, immersed in people's lives. And some of those brands lend themselves well to gameplay. We, we announced quite recently uh, a mass multiplayer online game for SpongeBob, where we see that audience being really engaged. It's social media enabled, but we want to keep it in an environment which is really safe, so parents feel comfortable. So if it's characters playing with each other rather than actual people, we feel that's a really good way to embrace gaming. Um, and then clearly, pretty much every single Nickelodeon property we have has got a number of games on every platform. And apps is, is clearly a big area for us. Two questions were asked to me by people before the panel even. Will Seesaw, even though it's in the UK, buy stuff from foreign language reasons, from France, from Germany, from Italy, from Spain? from Indies, is there room on the site for that, or is it still primarily English language? We, uh, we definitely are interested in all content, as long as it works for our audience. So our demographic is both male-female, slightly higher male, 16 to 35-year-olds, but we also go up to 45-year-olds. Uh, right now, we are mainly, well, I think we're really exclusively uh, English language, so US, UK mm -hmm. content. Our, Plans are to be on every single device uh, where people actually watch the content that we offer. Being everywhere on devices is key for us. It's, it's one of the key parts of our strategy. And what's the business model when you're doing a, an AdVod, an SVOD, or a TVOD deal? You know, say they're from Canada or the States sure. or somewhere else. What do you do? Pay an MG? Is it a rev share? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it definitely depends on, on the content. Obviously, with the premium content, so for example, to my left, and to my right, uh, I think I can say this. We do pay MGs. I don't think that's a no, big it's not secret, a secret or anything like that. No. Um, but um, that's for the really uh, premium content. Uh, with some of the other stuff uh, that maybe isn't quite in that same league, that's not going to be able to compete with it, we will do straight rev share deals, which still make a lot of sense for a lot of uh, content providers because then they have a platform that reaches the right audience, and then if that content does perform in terms of views, mm -hmm. uh, then either, usually on an AVOD basis, but again, um, we also do SVOD as well. So we've done a lot of those deals and continue to do them. Are you um, doing stuff with uh, Twitter and Facebook and, you know? Yes, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we've got a Facebook page, we've got a Twitter page, mm -hmm. we've got our own blog page. Uh, so uh, social media is very important for us. Okay. Hillary, could you tell yeah. us, because you mentioned skins, but yeah. for those that aren't familiar with it, maybe that's a good example of a study, a case study. Sure. It's recent, it's wildly successful, it's on other platforms. So um, our skin, skin series five has just ended. It ran through, um, it's from end of January. Um, and it is a youth drama. It's um, very smart, very edgy, uh, comedy-based. It focuses on groups of young people, uh, it follows through, them through sixth form, which in the UK is the last two years of your school. Um, so each cast lasts for two series. We have one series a year, 
and we refresh the cast every two years. The way it is written involves young people. Young people are very much involved in how it's written. There's a writer's room. We recruit very young writers. Um, and in terms of what we do with it multi-platform, yeah. um, we... Skins is very much in sort of the social network spaces, so it's on Facebook. Um, all of the characters have a social network presence and use them as though they were real people. Um, we have content that's specifically written. Um, so, for example, a majority of the core characters for the series just done each had a Twitter account. Um, they, the Twitter accounts launched before the series launched on air. Um, so super fans can get involved, can befriend them, can talk to them, have responses from them, um, but also can start to learn who these people are, who they're friends with, and the story starts to grow online through these interactions between these major characters before it even starts on air. What yeah. I'm talking about when I talk about multi-platform is telling the story that the drama on TV would tell, mm -hmm. either expand, you know, expanding it from the limits of the screen that it's within and putting it on multiple platforms. Um, and what it's not about is putting TV, just putting TV on the internet or um, creating an ARG. So we have... TV people moving into games, and now you're a games person moving into TV. Do you think that that will enhance your money? <laughs> or um, your audience, or? Well, you know, yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. People have asked me why we're a games company. Why on earth are we messing around in the TV space? But if broadcasters can make games, then uh, you know, we can go and park our tanks on their lawn. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, you know, kids, being serious, you know, kids love the internet. They love technology. It's yeah. incredibly natural for them. And uh, some of the most popular things for kids to do online is to socialize, uh, is to play games, and to watch videos. And uh, we've got two of those. And uh, we thought uh, adding the third one would be a, a smart step. Hmm. You're not putting the kids, you're not using Twitter and Facebook. It's your own destination social site. Yes. And it's got different rules. Exactly, because it's, it's an under 13 year old audience. Right. So, you know, while we do use Twitter and Facebook, it's mainly for the parents and, yep. and for the older players. Right. Uh, we thought. Be uh, more exciting and potentially commercially more exciting if we built our own um, network from scratch. What's happening with ads then on it? Yeah, so we, we get asked every day uh, from partners that want to connect with our audience, and mm -hmm. we've said no to just about everything so far. Um, and we may in the future, but you know the subscription model is very very successful. The licensing is working really well, and we just want to take our time before we um, go down a, an ad model. Mm -hmm. That may be something we introduce with the, the video content down the line. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the next, just year, year and a half, 18 months? I see our audience spanning, as I said, all the way from preschool to, to um, a much older demo. I think everyone is connected and online yeah. in some way, shape or form. I think our audience, our fans, are, should be platform agnostic. They expect to uh, embrace content on, on every platform all the time. And I guess the underlying fundamentals then is social, social media and search are the future of television, because ultimately everything is now digital. Hmm. How about you, Gordon? It's uh, having the, uh, the content that, uh, that people want to see and, and watch and delivering it to them in the, uh, in the way they want to watch it. Uh, but also for us, it's also um, going to the next level when it comes to technology, developing technology that creates uh, what I'd call um, a premium experience. Okay. And in the end, hopefully, start to get people to think, Ah, well, my first destination point is going to be Seesaw if I want to watch anything. Hmm. Again, because of the experience that we've been able to create. Uh, for Channel 4 Drama, I'd say um, immersive, sociable, mobile uh, experience of viewing drama in the next year or so. Michael, next um, year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, industry-wide, I think, I think we're going to see people start taking... Uh, online entertainment for kids much more seriously. Hundreds of kids' virtual worlds have launched, and most of them are not that great and have struggled. Um, but, you know, where are the Walt Disney's or the, the Jim Henson's or the Lassiter's of, of online entertainment for kids? It, it hasn't really happened yet. Mm. It's a multi billion dollar industry offline. Huge amount of that is going to flow online. We've got Moshi and Club Penguin and Webkins and a few other little things. I think it's going to um, really blow up in the next year or so. And uh, yeah, hope we're one of the, the major players.